What's going on, everybody? It's that time again. The All Sooners Podcast Post Game Edition, Episode 149. We are at the Red River Showdown in the Cotton Bowl press box. We're doing our usual thing here. Certified fresh. We haven't even left the stadium yet. Bringing you post game. Josh Calloway, John Hoover, Ryan Chapman. Folks, this was ugly. You know that. If you're watching, if you're listening, you know that. Texas won the Red River Showdown today. 49 to nothing over Oklahoma. Three straight losses for Brent Venables and the Sooners. The first ever back-to-back 30-point losses for Oklahoma and the biggest shutout loss in program history. Are you kidding me? It couldn't have gone much worse. The thing that's going to stick with us after this game is the history. Brent Venables in his first year being on the wrong side of history. He's got four of these in his pocket where uh, he was – or or at least three where he was – uh, an assistant coach on the Oklahoma team that just beat poor Texas into the ground. Mm-hmm. He got that today. He and his coaching staff and his team got that. 49 nothing. Ryan, that's as bad a game as I've gotten to cover in a long time. Guys, I mean, Brent Venables is officially on the John Blake trajectory of 98. The, all these first shutout loss since when? 98. First time Oklahoma's dropped three straight games since when? 98. First time Oklahoma's dropped three straight conference games since when? 1998, and the players he inherited, while not just loaded to the gills, all that stuff, uh, we heard it all offseason, right? This roster is not totally barren of talent. Lincoln Riley did not take everything. He didn't take uh, the shelves and all that stuff. There is no excuse to be the University of Oklahoma in 2022 and to not have a backup quarterback that you feel confident even giving a basic game plan to. There was no confidence in Bevel. The defense stinks. And uh, it's a minor miracle that there haven't been, like, guys hitting the portal. Maybe Oklahoma's very thankful for the new portal windows, which means that even if guys are disgruntled, they got to stay on the team. Yeah, we're not going to beat around the bush uh, here this evening. And, I, you know, last week we did the postgame show in Fort Worth. I opened with a, a disclaimer of this is not the sunshine pumping pot, you know, show. You can find that other places. You know, we give our honest opinions of what we think this team is, and I don't think, I don't think even the biggest OU homer on the planet could even spin anything out of today's game. Forty nine nothing in favor of the Horns. We'll go ahead and jump here's, in. Here's what you expect. You thought last week was bad. <laughs> That's the spin yeah. this week. Yeah. Is that this is way worse than that thing we saw last week. The, I, I will actually That's give really you bad. a legitimate spin. If you if you were going to do one, it would be that this team is certainly a different team with Dylan Gabriel. They don't lose 49 nothing today with Dylan Gabriel. Now, they're not good. Obviously, they were getting blown out last week when Gabriel was in there. But they can move the ball. We've seen that. They can score points. We saw what yeah. they did in Lincoln. We saw what they did in a couple early games. Even the loss. I mean, Kansas State, they scored points that game. We actually felt they left a lot on the table in that Kansas State game. And they scored points and, and got yards. So this offense is not bad with Dylan Gabriel. It, it's a good offense. It's not as good as Kyler Murray Baker Mayfield offense, but it's a good offense. Without him, it's awful. So that, that's where we should go ahead and start. Yeah. Offensively. Ryan asked the question in, in the press conference. He had it ready to go. They didn't call on him. Uh, how did it? How did it get to this point? How did it get to this yeah. bad where you can't roll your backup quarterback out there and even be competitive? You can't be competitive with your backup quarterback. You can be competitive with some Wildcat guys, tight end, running back, receiver playing Wildcat. Competitive-ish. Competitive-ish. They had some. They had <laughs> yeah. some plays. Didn't score obviously. Yeah. No. It, there were there were a couple of drives early where if they had finished those drives, I mean they're pulling out all the stops. They ran a fake field goal, which I called by the way. I said they're going to fake this. Um, guys, how how do you not – what is it, Ryan? Quarterback development? Lack what? of coaching? Lack of talent coming into the program? I mean, so we have ha- we know about the revolving door out of the portal. That's been a trend since Lincoln Riley all the way back. Uh, trigger warning, sorry. There's going to be a lot of looking back because you have to look, look that to get here. But um, ever since he went on the trajectory of – Oklahoma's going to recruit the best quarterback every other year. It's been no secret. There was not a priority on recruiting quarterbacks in even years. If a Chandler Morris falls into your lap, sick. 
Uh, there was not a priority in Tanner Mordecai. doing anything to keep your Tanner Mordecai's on the roster, to keep Chandler Morris on the roster. Like Those guys knew you were coming in to play for a year or two, maybe three, just to have the shine of, I studied under Lincoln Riley so that I can hit the portal and go start for two years. So yeah. all those guys clear out, and Oklahoma signed Nick Evers. And in the spring, we heard over and over and over again, which is why – Hoove, I'm sure you dealt with this on your radio show all week, but all week on my radio show, people were like, hey, we saw Davis Bevel against TCU. Why is it not Nick Evers? Why is it not this? Well, the coaches told us, like, just flat out, we need guys. We need guys. We need guys. They got one, not one, but two guys in the portal in Davis Bevel and General Booty. And I fully believe Brent when he says we repped other guys in practice and we thought Davis was the best option. Like I, I believe that if yeah. they had an answer, if they had yeah. something different, they would have thrown it out there. So it's especially bad for Oklahoma when on the exact same day, on this exact same day, you look around the Big 12, Kansas puts up 28 points with their backup quarterback. Texas Tech takes the guy who was their third string quarterback going into Stillwater against a better defense than this Texas defense and puts 31 points on the board. That... If you want to say Kansas, okay, Bean's been in the system for a year, all that stuff. That's a brand new staff at Texas Tech. They've had the exact same amount of time to work with their team as Jeff yeah. Levy has had with this offense. And this offense got shut out for the first time since 1965 in this game. It's an embarrassment. It's a failure. And if Dylan Gabriel can't get cleared for Kansas, Oklahoma... Even if he gets cleared, there might be three and four. Oklahoma will definitely be three and four, and I don't know who's showing up to that game in Norman. And here's my question. Kansas fans. Correct. Yeah, here, here's my question, and uh, we're going to get into all of it here, so it was free flow as it comes up. How on earth do you not try somebody else in this game? Is that how you guys felt in the press box? Because hey. down on the field, we're, we're talking like, especially at halftime, it's a clean time to talk somebody in the break, say, hey, General Booty, hey, Nick Evers. We're going to you. Uh, we're gonna. We gotta try. We gotta try something. Because in the second half in Fort Worth, Davis Bevel offense did nothing. First half today, I mean, quite literally, did nothing. Bevel, what was his final stat line? Thirty nine yards passing. Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Thirty eight yards passing. Six of twelve. Okay, the whole yards. game. It wasn't working at all. Davis Bevel, God bless him. I don't know the kid. I'm not, it's nothing personal. It has been awful with him in there. He can't complete tough. a pass more than two yards down the field. Those little slants over the middle is kind of. That's all he's shown us in a consistent ability to do. So when you're at half of the OU Texas game and it's 28 nothing, what do you have to lose to yeah. just try well, General Booty, to try Nick Evers? Even if it is in practice, these guys look awful right. in practice. Still, what do you have to try it? Like, what, a, is to, what is to be lost the, from trying that? Apparently they had a bad week of practice, or they didn't have a good week of practice, which opened the door for Davis Bevel to not only start, but stay in the game and go pretty much the distance until the final drive. I'm going to take you guys back. I know you don't want to hear this. I'm going to take you guys back to 2010, I think, um, at Colorado, Oklahoma State. Uh, Zach Robinson got hurt. Mike Gundy rolls out Alex Kate. Alex Kate goes 0 for 10 in the first half. 0 for 10. That's as bad as it gets, guys. <laughs> yeah. He says, you know what? Let's take this baseball player that walked on, Brandon Whedon from, from Edmond. Let's, to, let's put him out there. Brandon so Whedon yeah. he was crap in practice, apparently. These are his words. He wasn't very good in practice. Thought he was doing fine, but he wasn't practicing at a good level. So Mike Gundy didn't want to play him. So he gets him in the game. What happens? He comes back, wins the game, comes back, uh, becomes an Oklahoma State legend. Try them. Jeff Lebby is a young quarterbacks coach, okay? This is where Jeff Lebby grows as a quarterbacks coach, as a college football coach, where he says, he looks at General Booty and says, hmm, he didn't have a particularly good week of practice. Maybe I should have played him anyway. Nick Evers, maybe I should have played him earlier than the last drive of the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was uh, the, there was not good coaching today. Brent Venable said it. I'm not sitting here taking pot shots. Brent Venable said we need to coach him better. Brent Venable's 100 right. They need to coach those guys better. Yeah, and, and like you know, before I will get you in a second, just you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and Brent Venable's obviously he knows the game of football 10 trillion times more than I do. Jeff Levy too. All, all the coaches, right? I just I I. I feel like there is zero <laughs> rationale or argument to be made for sticking with Bevel. Yeah. That's that's why that's really what I want to hear is what's the argument t toward sticking with Bevel? Mm -hmm. Cuz yeah, I the, can't that's muster the best one. week of practice. Yeah, yeah but and, you, and that, the whole right. first half was it so bad. Right there. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I think what we we're starting to see is on and both sides of the ball we'll get to all that. 
this is a very stubborn coaching staff. In year one, yeah, that's they, true. in year one, they've come in and it was asked all week, right? About uh, we talked a lot about Ted Roof and Brent Venables and defensively the scheme, all that stuff. And while I don't necessarily think that if, if you had asked any coach, like. Uh, Brent was asked, did you ever consider keeping some of the existing defense? And, and like, no coach is ever going to say, no, I'm not going to run my own playbook, except for uh, a situation where, like, at Oklahoma State, where Mike Gundy has this offense, and he says, this is what we do. I'm hiring a coordinator to operate in the framework of that. That's not what's happening when you have a new head coach coming in and establishing all that stuff. You've seen it defensively, right? We'll get to this. The three-man front was laughable again. They finally waved the white flag on that late in the third quarter about – one, two, three, six and a half quarters too late over the last six and a half quarters. Finally, they did that. But I think offensively, you're seeing the stubbornness of this is a coaching staff yeah. that is not willing to find out if there's a gamer. They're not willing to find out if something something's wrong. Like it, if it's 14 to nothing deep into the third quarter and that's what you've seen in practice, okay, stick with it. Your defense, maybe football happens, something like that. At 28 nothing at half, where your defense has looked laughably bad, can't stop the run, Quinn Ewers is, it could have had a picnic back there in the Cotton Bowl yeah. for, for all the time that he had. For the most part, there is no defensible reason why you do not roll somebody out there. If you want to save games for a red shirt, you don't put errors out there. Why is Booty not out there? Why are you not throwing someone else out there? Because – you have to find out just in case you're wrong, mm -hmm. just in case. And this coaching staff is so hellbent on this is who we're going to be, and we're we are setting the standard for years to come. And and I get that you take setting that identity over not going six and six this year, or whatever. But that's the game that loses you recruits. Getting drummed in the Cotton Bowl, that's the kind of game that makes recruits sit back and go, hold on. You guys go back and, and look at our allsooners.com, look at our uh, uh, Friday stuff that we put together, the one big thing and the three keys to the game, our predictions. Uh, look at our Saturday game day copy, the X Factors and the Under the Radar. You'll see a couple of references to the potential for Oklahoma running the Wildcat. Who didn't, who didn't anticipate that they were going to – because we saw Davis Bevel last week in Fort Worth. Who didn't anticipate that they were going to come out and run the Wildcat? I think Texas didn't anticipate it because like, when they came out and did it, it worked. They were getting six yards, eight yards, four yards, three yards. Everything yeah. was positive. And then Jeff Levy got in his, in his own way. Brent Venable's words, again, not toward Jeff, but he, Brent Venable said sometimes we can't get out of our own way. I think he could have applied that saying to Levy because every time Oklahoma had a little success, they got a third and, uh, third and one or a third and two, something like that, uh, Levy would – put Bevel, Bevel back in and try to throw a conventional pass. Uh, it, it just everything they did, every time they took two steps forward, they took a step back or two steps back, sometimes three steps back. Uh, it's, it's disappointing, and I don't want to forget this because it was the coolest play of the day, the um, fake field goal from Michael Turk. That was great. Flip to yeah. Zach Schmidt. I mean, that shows right there. That whole drive. This team, this yeah. coaching staff – they're daring and they're swashbuckling and they're putting it together and it, they're going to pull out all the stops and they're going to do it. And then when it gets down to, to those third and shorts, fourth and shorts, oh, uh, well, we're, this, we're a no-huddle uh, no quarterback-driven team. Let's go ahead and run a regular conventional play. And they didn't work. Or a jump pass to, yeah. while you're 5'9 running back. You, I mean, come you, on. Yeah, you, you trick play. You wildcat and trick play your way all the way down there. Yeah. You get to fourth and one, huge play early in the game. You put Bevel, but then you run between the tackles. They know you're going to run it. You run the read option you with lose a guy a that does, that's never read, apparently, the option. That's on third down. On third down. On third down, he got stuffed, bent backwards almost. Jeez. On third down, Eric Gray probably has the first down if he if Davis Bevel correctly reads that. On fourth down, like you mentioned, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. On fourth down, they just run it up the gut. If that's what you're going to do, to your point, put Braden Willis back there, who, who falls forward, and yeah. he's, he's a – couple yards tall, right? Yeah. He falls forward for two yards, and you've got the extra block. Or direct in. snap to Gray. We saw them yeah. do that, and that worked the, pretty well. The pop pass, Terrible. I will never got understand. Cute. Got cute. Yeah. I will never understand. Texas said, Texas said in the postgame press conference, their defense was prepped. They're going to try and throw out of this at some point. Mm -hmm. The time to throw out of it was on the first drive before they got back to the sideline. The time to throw at it was on fourth and two to have – Braden Willis, the guy who's actually taken snaps at quarterback in high school, yeah. try and throw a pot pass to Daniel Parker. Like I, I would have bet all the money in the world if you had done that. Daniel Parker would have walked into the end zone. You have a touchdown on the board, and Texas going, "What the heck? What's happening now?" And yeah. instead, every time they had the opportunity, 
it, it was just awful. It, right. it was Venables, bad. Venable said we got to coach him better. He's a thousand percent right. Correct. Yeah, no, and that drive, too, that was first down, correct, when they threw the interception? Yeah, they just yeah. got in a nice long run. They, like a they ran run all the way down there. Wildcat yep. runs, yep. Jet Super Farouk. Like and Texas had it. no answers. Like, they, the they, were was not, pretty, they were not good. fitting the run against the Wildcat stuff, and they didn't know who was getting the ball, and they were doing all kinds of cross action and fakes and tosses and pitches and sweeps and reverse. It's like Texas had no clue. What? And yeah. then what happens? They get in their own way and call themselves right, make, make calls that take them right out of what they were doing. Well, and here, here's the other thing, too, which lost in all of this has not been talked about. One, I, I didn't hear it in the press box. I didn't hear it, any of this. What did we talk about Oklahoma needing to do this week going up against that offense? Ball control. They needed to play ball control. Early in that game, when you're having success with the Wildcat, from the jump, they're still snapping the ball with 20 seconds left on the play clock. So much. It was idiotic. It was naive. It was naive. If, if you this knew. This is what we do. This is our identity. If Adjust you, as a coach yeah, to your personnel. Had a whole if, week to do it. If, so. If, so Eric Gray told me after the game, on Sundays when they started implementing the Wildcat looks. So on Sunday, Oklahoma knew if Dylan Gabriel was not the quarterback, Jeff Levy basically sent the message that he has no faith. That Davis Bevel just playing straight up is going to beat this team. So how, if that is your entire game plan, are you naive enough to continue to snap the ball with 20 seconds on the play clock? Their first possession where they got a first down ran under two minutes off the clock. It's a, it's lunacy. It's naivety. Yeah. It's a coaching staff trying to it, trying to say we're not anyone else. We're our own staff. This is what we're going to be. Can't have that. Stubborn. You can't have that if you have the best talent. You have to be able to yeah. properly identify what you have, which gets us into the defense conversation. You have to be able to look at what your talent on the roster is and say, we know we want to be this or that. <laughs> at some point, you have to evaluate. They can't do the three-man yeah. front. Yeah. They can't do it. We need to look at what uh, – just go back and review the, the videos. What the opponent is getting on the ground against the three-man front. Because it's got to be eight yards of carry. Yeah. Easy. It's not good. It's not good. And and for one finishing note on the the whole playing another quarterback's conversation too. I mean, I'm reminded. You know, it's a common thing you hear a lot in in baseball where whenever a team is really bad in Major League Baseball and they're losing a lot and they have a bunch of older guys, fans get annoyed because like we're playing awful with older guys. Let's at least if we're going to lose, lose with kids. Let's lose with young guys. Let's see what we have. All things being equal, same play the freshman, sentiment play the goes rookie. here. Yeah, I mean. It was going – look what happened today. It was 49 nothing. Nothing went right today at all. You might as well try some of your youngsters, see what you have, and then you catch lightning in a bottle. You never know in this game. We saw last year Lincoln Riley had the guts to pull the trigger yep. on his five-star quarterback. That was a five-star quarterback who had been, you know, pretty good a season before. Number one little, player in the, yeah, in the country. And Heisman favorite, and yep. he benched him for Caleb Williams. No, I'm not saying Nick Evers or General Booty's Caleb Williams, but well, I'm not saying Davis Bevel, Spencer Rattler either. Better Make the ex- move. Better example. Two years ago, he benched him for Tanner Mordecai. Yep. Very right good point. Game, which is right which is here. which is the better example than okay, like there wasn't a Caleb Williams on the sideline, there wasn't a Tanner Mordecai on the sideline. But and I know that it was billed as the it was a timeout. Spencer was coming back in, all that stuff. But the talent disparity is way bigger than, than riding on Caleb Williams, and he pulled the trigger, right? Lincoln Riley pulled the trigger. There yeah, was no trigger worked. pulled at all. The, the trigger was, oh, crap, Davis Bevel completed one pass on yeah. the first drive and then scooped one into Drake Stoops' feet on the, on the next play, which, again, why were they throwing on first down? Lunacy. Evaluate your talent. <laughs> um because he talked about well, we we let Jeff Levy after the game. What we killed us was playing in, in second and third and long. Okay, then why did you throw the ball with Davis Bevel on first down when you on Sunday evaluated he couldn't throw the football? Long story short, Oklahoma's not going to win any games until Dylan Gabriel comes back. Um, How tough must it be for Bevel too? You're the quarterback. You've worked hard all week. You focused. You studied. You did the film work. You re- you prepped. You're ready to go. You get out here and all of a sudden, nope. Wildcat. No, I'm back in. No, you're Wildcat. No, you're back in. That's got to be impossible for a guy making his first career start in this atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, I just think that was mishandled completely from the jump. Like I said, long story short, they're not going to win. They're not going to win any games until Dylan Gabriel gets crumbs back. I'm going to say that. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I have a hard time fathoming them winning a game with Davis Bevel starting at quarterback. I don't know what Booty or Evers is. 
you know, I don't know, I don't know why we'd ever see it. If we didn't see it today, I don't know why we would see it next week or whatever. So we'll see. What did you guys think about Dylan Gabriel uh, doing the full warm up today, pads and all? Yeah, helmet, chin strap, everything. The whole bit. Now, we never really fell for it. As far as, I mean, yeah, I he wasn't going to play. He was right. never going to play. I mean, right. it's just common sense. It but just Texas it, thought he was. You, you at least have to respect. I mean, oh, he's I out there it. warming no, up. I love the gamesmanship as long as it doesn't put him in any kind of, you know, like his head is hurting or he's having sensitivity to the sunlight or whatever. As, as long as there's no symptoms, you know, and uh, Jeff Levy said he felt great today. He really did. Mm. Uh, and he was crushed that he couldn't play. But they knew on Wednesday that he couldn't play. So that was total chicanery. Total gamesmanship, and guys, Texas fell for it. That's my only explanation. Texas came out here and said, I'm betting that uh, Dylan Gabriel kid's going to play. We we need to make our defense. And, no, they came out and ran the Wildcat, and Texas was like, what? Yeah, what? So, surprised me first, too. They, did, they, did, they adjusted a little bit. They didn't adjust great. They never did really truly just shut it down, so – yeah, that was, that was yeah. Just never really surprising. committed to it. And and, yeah. and they they ran the ball up the middle. They ran the ball off the edges. Texas is a little soft on the edges, but their their middle players are stout, and they they got what they wanted uh, for stretches for stretches of certain drives before starting to shoot themselves in the foot at the end of every drive. Yeah, it. It was lunacy. What Oklahoma, <laughs> what Oklahoma did today? It was lunacy. It, it was insane, yeah. and it was. It just makes no sense. The, the Kansas State game, you can say, okay, coaches have to get their guys, all that stuff. The TCU game, it's inexplicable coverage busts. It, are things too complicated? This was like, what's going on here? Because the trajectory that this is on is historic, and it's not the kind of history that you want to be writing down at a place yep, like yeah. Oklahoma. Yep. Let's go ahead and talk about the defensive side. So you guys talked about it a little bit before. Um, Three-man front, that needs to die. Um Zero sacks again. Zero sacks again. This defense Four tackles for loss is again. just insanely lost. Um, the, I think the, the athletic the, these talent guys, is there. I, I really know. Do. We've seen it. We saw, I mean, again, it wasn't murderer's row, but UTEP can't say, I mean, they're flying to the football. They're making nice right. form tackles. Like, that stuff should translate. Angles. No matter like, who you're playing, angles. Yeah. That It's like it just escaped them completely. Is it just purely a confidence thing? I don't I don't – it's like different guys wearing the same uniforms yeah. out there. It, it's crazy. I thought Brent really described it very well in his press conference today, post game, when he said, well, there were no quick touchdowns. They did fix that. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, TCU is having that. a track meet, and uh, they, they t- <laughs> so they, they shut that down. Yeah. But at some point today, Texas was running, uh, especially on some of those corner routes, just wide open. Uh, a couple of times, Ewers missed guys that were wide, wide open for touchdowns. So – um, yeah, could have been a lot better coverage, um, pre- pass rush, everything. Yeah, I mean, Quinn Ewers, arm talent, best quarterback they've played this year. Yep. But Max Duggan did not miss a single guy wide open as far as seeing him. Ewers right. missed a lot. Like, it could have been a, a lot worse because it, was, it wasn't like he missed it and then Oklahoma gets a stop. It was he missed it and then four plays later and two and a half more minutes off the clock, Texas in the end zone. I actually thought – I was talking to Josh about this – uh, Texas could have named their score, and I actually thought that it was puzzling that Steve Sarkeesian didn't. Took his foot off the gas. He took his foot off the gas. A little which bit is, of mercy out of Steve Sarkeesian. Which is lunacy in this game. Like, he should have yeah. he should have put 60 on the board. Like, pu- like when Oklahoma's down like this, punch and punch and punch See, and stomp. That's the thing, though. When, when this happened to Texas, I thought Texas, for the most part, a lot of those times quit. I don't think Oklahoma quit today. No, they're just awful. They're just, they're just, they're, just they're, they're, well. they're an awful football team. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, I mean, it defensively, I, I don't even know where the – I mean, B.J. Robinson did whatever he want. The, the inability to get any kind of semblance of a pass rush. I mean, it's just it's hard for good defenses, I, I should say good secondaries, and, and to hold up when the opposing quarterback, it feels like he's got all day. Quinn Ewers, he was just in the backyard throwing it around well, in this and, game. And they had – Quinn made two mistakes – the, the second one was the, the dead duck interception that I, I have no clue still where he was throwing that football to. I think he saw Matthew McConaughey on the sideline and said, what's up, bro? I want you <laughs> to have a McConaughey and Bosworth were chopping it up. I would like to know what that but conversation the, was about. The, the first, Acting. Yeah. <laughs> the, the first mistake was on the second drive of the game for Texas where Woody Washington jumps the route and just doesn't make the play. Like, he doesn't come up with the catch. Maybe changes the game. Because, Maybe. because again, like we said, this is a game where weird stuff happens. You don't know mentally. Hit. 
He yes. did take some contact yes. on that throw. Where uh, I think it was the only time he got hit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, mentally, uh, you don't know how someone's going to respond. So if Woody Washington gets that ball and OU takes over at midfield and then they spring the wildcat on him and OU's up 7 nothing, who does Quinn Ewers press? Who knows? But instead, he shakes that off, goes right down the field. Very impressive to shake yep. that throw off. Yep. Looked un- just unbothered. Texas is up 7-0. And then again, on, on that second try for Oklahoma, they had to pull out all the stops just to get stuffed on fourth and two in the red zone. At that point, the game was over. Disheartening. Like, it's like yeah. you you threw, th- you threw Braden Willis direct snaps, Shula Farouk's direct snaps, you threw a fake field goal at, at Texas, and you stalled the drive in the Texas half. And at that point, everyone's like, well, that's lit. Oh, you threw the kitchen sink on drive two, and it's done. Yep. yep. It's no, done. I mean, gosh, defensively right now, it's just a mess. And How about Sarkeesian, though? We said on the wrap, let's give him some credit. As a play caller, he's very gifted. He's a little bit like Lincoln Riley. He's got some things up his sleeve that you just don't see coming. Mm. Uh, he prepares moving guys into spaces – manipulating defenses away from that space and then moving those guys into that space. It's like uh, a couple of wheel routes, uh, a couple of corner routes. He's hitting receivers. Ewers has got receivers uh, that nobody is covering. Nobody even sees them when they're moving across the formation. Running backs out of the backfield had something like four four catches for over 50 yards. Tight end Jatavian Sanders is moving wherever he wanted to. He had 70 yards, I think, receiving, 71 and two touchdowns. Um, Moving and manipulating chess pieces. Sarkeesian is a little bit of a master, and what did you guys say? He pantsed Brent Venables today? Yes. Not even close. <laughs> like it just, Hard to argue. Just yeah. n- not even like pressure, things like that. You mentioned it. There were two times after the second drive, uh, before the Woody Washington almost picked, there was the Jatavian Sanders play that got pulled back a little yep. bit that was just pure scheme. Xavier Worthy on the goal line, if he moves the right direction the, at, at first – he should have walked into the end zone on a play that was just ski. Like, mm-hmm. like Brentman was not even have them in the right spot right. to to contend with any of that. Much less have the horses to make adjustments, put pressure on Ewers, any of that. It, it was just a every single fast of the game, outclassed, outplayed. It 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 looked like a uh, first year head coach who didn't have thirty years of coordinator experience <laughs> walked in. They were just like, here, take the program over. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It was a mismatch. So, we'll spin it forward. We'll try and do that. <laughs> um, I asked this question, I think, a couple weeks ago. I've asked it every week. It feels like now. Where's Oakland go from here? I mean, how do you how do you pick up the pieces now? You've lost three in a row. Yeah, they're pretty shabby. And they've gotten progressively worse. That's the really tough part. The confidence. Because, I mean, when you're, every week, the when you're losing dipped games and dipped. week after week in any sport, any level, you just hope that at least you feel like you're gaining ground in some areas. And it, it obviously, I mean, it was a close loss to a, a good K-State team. It was at home, but it was a good K-State team. Major Martinez carved you up. You played pretty good offense still. You had a chance to win that game. You didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got crushed in TC, by TCU. A couple of, couple of uh, what, like a boxing match. A couple of yeah. haymakers knocked you out early. And you're like, what, what just happened? That was different out here today. Yeah, this and then, was fifteen rounds of bloodbath. And then you no show this game. I mean, forty nine nothing. This is Texas. I mean, this is this is the game that you should be. It, it could be at the end of the year and you're zero and eleven. This is all it is, and you should bring out your A game because this is this is it. This is OU Texas. Did you guys and, think that was going to happen? Uh, I kind of did. I had, Texas, I had some res- would rally. I had week? some respect for the rivalry. I, I just too. thought it would bring out the, and it just didn't happen. I did too, and it got worse. I'm, they played worse. I'm embarrassed I picked Oklahoma to score 17 points in my <laughs> pregame pick. I, I'm a little annoyed that I hedged because I said all week Texas will win and cover easily, which they did, obviously. Um, but then I kind of hedged because I just – I did. I had some respect for the – I've never – this is my sixth or seventh OU Texas game. I've only seen, like, barn burners here. Like, I've never seen a blowout, <laughs> which I know what happens. OU's blowing out Texas a few times here in the last decade or so. But I had some respect for the rivalry – Oh, you just didn't. I mean, they just didn't show. I mean, and, and credit to OU fans too. Made the trip down here. There was some worry that maybe OU fans won't get, be up for full. this. It was full. It was electric. It in pregame, it felt like it always does. It was awesome, and that didn't last for long because Texas just completely just wrapped their hands around Oklahoma and squeezed the life out of them in this game. I'm going to use a word, and I'm if there are players or coaches on the OU football team, they're probably going to get pissed at me and they're going to turn it off right now. But I'm going to use the word, and I'm going to ask you guys in in this context: Is this team soft? Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I think so. you got to respond. You can't not be soft and lose to your biggest rival by 50. That's the thing. I don't think they quit. I think they gave the effort, but I just think they don't like being roughed up. I think Kansas State did something to them. Kansas State hit them, and they didn't like they it. Broke they did them. not respond. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. kind of broke them they a little bit. Them. What the heck? Is that because Alex Grinch, Lincoln Riley, that culture, is that what Brent Venables has got to flush out now? The soft? You know, something else Brent said that we didn't touch on, that's kind of the highlight of the press conference. He said it twice. He said, I think we're a tired football team for whatever reason. And he said, I think we need to be fresher. We need to some way to get fresher. In other words, heavy legs. Uh, heavy off season, Brent, I'll say it, bragged for the most part about what was it, 43 straight days of inside drill or something like that? However many consecutive days. I can't remember. I'm, I'm sorry about the number. But he we bra- talked to Brent a lot. Yeah, no, they all run together. Uh, but he talked about how many consecutive days they ran inside drill. Right. Or some kind of, uh, you know, heavy tackling. We're going to toughen these guys up. I don't think this team has responded to those days when they, you know, they don't do it now, of course, anymore. They, is that, was tired legs, sore backs, shoulders hurt. I mean, or, you know, is, is Schmitty built mean something that's uh, a little too like a dump truck? You know what I mean? Like that's a, that's a well, bad analogy, but you see what I'm saying? They're not, they're not adaptable. They're not quick. They're not racing to the football like they were the first two or three games of the season. They've hit the wall physically. What the, what the heck? They've got three linebackers they trust to play. Three. J- hey, Jaron Cannick got in the first half, though. I'm sorry, Ted Roof. He played a snap in the first <laughs> half. One snap. Won't ask about that again. Uh, there are two defensive ends, and they've been depleted defensive end, right? Marcus Stripling, R. Mason Thomas, those guys didn't play last week. R. Mason Thomas has been out since week two, right? He's back this week. Uh, back this week. But basically, you're sending Reggie Grimes and Ethan Downs out there to get double teamed into oblivion every single play for three straight weeks. They're just rotating one guy in between Jalen Redman and occasionally Jeffrey Johnson or uh, Co. Or, Co or Kelly on the interior. Uh, the, the injuries have meant that Woody Washington now plays safety again. That was weird. Right? Uh, and, and that you've got corners, stuff like that. Like, no wonder, no wonder the entire thing is uh, tired, run down, all that stuff, because they have no depth. All the depth that they talked about and all the depth that you thought they had developed, it's poof gone. Yeah. And uh, I, this, I, it's clear this coaching staff doesn't believe in the concept of gamers. That's literally what I'm going to ask Jeff Levy on Monday is, do you believe in the concept of a gamer? Do you believe in a guy that can yeah. be bad in practice and go out and be a positive for you on Saturdays? Yeah, but the answer is no. I, if, if, he, uh, if, <laughs> if he says yes, then he's lying. If the answer is yes, yeah. then my follow-up is going to be, so what having a quarterback then? Yeah, so, why so, are you playing so, so why has General Booty or Nick Evers not gotten a shot uh, in the third, fourth quarter against TCU or in the third or fourth quarter to actually run the offense uh, against Texas? Yeah, and, and you know to go back to my <laughs> – Previous, when I said at the beginning, if you wanted to put any kind of a spin on this, that they are a different team with Gabriel, I, I do think that it affects the defense, too, to have an offense that's just giving you nothing, both literally zero on the scoreboard, a lot of quick drives. You're having to go right back out there with those tire legs. We're not fresh, all that stuff that Brent talked about what Hoover was just saying. But also just mentally, I mean, that that's hard to go play defense against a good offense. Quinn Ewers and B. John Robinson and Xavier Worthy, when you know, like, Whenever Tex got that first touchdown, I mean, it literally was over. Oh, you never scored. But when they got the second one, it was 14 nothing. It felt over. Yeah. It was yeah. like, how are they going to get the end zone twice? Mm-hmm. How's that going to happen? Yep. That's hard to play defense that way. Well, so I, I think, I, I tell you I think how, Dylan Gabriel coming back would help the defense a lot, too. I, it would. You're right. Uh, it has to be complimentary football that works together. Billy Bowman, but, too. That doesn't but I'll tell you another thing that uh, I really thought when it was 14 nothing, I said, this feels over to myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm internalizing here. <laughs> this feels <laughs> over. But this, the, and um, Jeff Levy talked about the first five possessions of the game where they ran Wildcat and the Wildcat was working. And I kept thinking, okay, this time they'll go back to it and this time they'll stay with it. Nope. Well, maybe this time when it's 21 nothing, they'll go back to it and this time for sure they'll stay with it. Nope. They kept getting away from it. And it, uh, at 21 nothing, it felt over for sure. And at 28 nothing, it was like, how high is Texas going to go today? Okay. What was the point of keeping Davis Bevel on the field for any of the Wildcats? That was stupid. That because was dumb, too. He was out there receiving like five snaps in a row. Because what was that? Six, seven. You're not fooling anybody. You're just wasting a spot. Well, because right. if I'm Texas, I'm He's saying, dear anybody. sweet baby Jesus, 
please try to run a reverse pass to him and get the ball back in his hands. Yes. For the love of God, please do anything you can. To so, like, just pull him off the field. Right. It, Crazy. It was, it's, a co- it's a coach being too cute. It was, well, it, too it was, smart for their own good. Not too smart. It's like he was like, I'm going to go with this game plan, but I don't want to go 100% with this game plan in case I look dumb. That's it. Like That's he was exactly afraid of it. looking I was stupid. Think, I was thinking about this upstairs, and I couldn't remember to get back to my point. They they went to the Wildcat, but they didn't commit to it. Right. That was their only option. There was the only chance they could win this game, but they didn't commit to it. You can't do things. You can't take half measures when your quarterback is busted. Uh, your defense isn't playing well. You can't take half measures and say we'll run a little Wildcat. Yeah. But on third and fourth down, we're gonna put that quarterback. But you can't do that. Yeah. Also, they schemed up no looks to get Marvin Mims the football in the Wildcat. Was he was not even alive. So, today. not he, his fault. He's your best player. One catch for two yards. One catch for minus two yards. Negative two yards. Yeah. Four targets. And I believe the pass was a padded ball from Marcus yes, Major. Yes, touch pass. I mean, you got to find a way to get Marvin Mims Mar- the wh- ball. Where, he won you this game. Him and Caleb Williams won you this game a year ago. Where, the ball. where was the second drive from TCU where it was – Still with Dylan Gabriel, but empty set, motion back into the backfield. Marvin Mims is your running back. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think that Davis Bevel might have been able to throw a swing pass to Marvin Mims. Maybe. I think that Davis – broke his finger. Maybe. He does but, throw those short passes. He's got really a cannon. Hard, but Nobody's in, arguing that. In, yeah. Instead of throwing the passes out to the flat to Drake Stoops on the first drive after uh, Braden Willis gets the first down, why would you not – Throw that look out there where your best players are then in the flats. You're, you're bypassing the strength of Texas defense, which is the front seven. It, it was half measures and imaginative, but not going all the way and not like thinking through it. It just was puzzling, the whole thing. Texas has a punter named Danny Treho, though, so that's pretty cool. That's awesome. I, yeah. saw, I was scoping <laughs> that, too. On the, content, on the conversation, on the topic of, of punting, too, I cannot – Cannot, folks, watch Oklahoma punt from the 40 again for a touchback. <laughs> they did that last week, too. That drives me up a wall. That's 20 yards net. Yep. You might as well go for it if you're going to do that. Now, obviously, if you pit them at the one, that's great. But it's on everybody. Well, you're going to make that decision down the ball. And Turk? Trey West flubbed one of those. That He was on he the did. goal line. I was going to say, it's a two-parter. Trey West was there, and he should have had it. But Turk also, we all like Turk. He's, very good. He's a great punter. Give yourself a little more buffer zone, man. Aim for like the ten, maybe, because you're down. Your downing team. I don't know if that's even a, a, a phrase. Gunners. They're not great. They've blown a few this year. Yeah. So maybe I can't watch that happen again. That drives me insane. When you pump yeah. the forty, and it's a touchback. So you're netting twenty yards. Twenty yards. If you do a twenty-yard interception, everybody just, be freaking out. Just so you can give the football back to the other team. Right. It, it, it's you might as well just go for it at that point. Yep. You might as well try something fake punt at that point. So that that drives me insane too. Um, we're winding down here. We're not going to go real long. There's not much else that needs to be said. Let's uh, you know. Jalen Daniels got hurt against uh, Texas Tech today, or against uh, TCU today. Kansas. So we don't know if he'll be Kansas back. Kansas right. did lose. Also, welcome to the program, CJ Colden. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's alive. Made an interception, had a nice tackle he kinda, today He kind of well. posed a little bit, too, after that interception. After that fluttering interception that the quarterback didn't see him and threw it right to him. Had a nice little run back, and then he posed a little bit. What was the score? Well, 30, when you, 35 nothing. When you come from Wyoming, you're just happy I was going to say – You're happy, you're happy to play in this game. I was going to yeah. say it's a steal from um, – I don't know like, what's what's a good phrase. Maybe steal from college football final. They do that's a dollar. They like, that's find you. Yeah. Yes, he, yeah. Trey Morrison today, he lays out Xavier Worthy. Good hit. 35 nothing. he's, like, flexing and stuff. Like, come on, man. Get a feel for the moment Read a the little room. bit. Read the room. Right. Well, I actually think that anything that instills some sort of confidence, the coaches ask, like, yes. Brent Good brought job. him over and gave him the business. For, he didn't yell at him. He didn't scream at him or anything. But, I mean, he talked right into his face for a good minute. And then afterwards, Trey Morrison was, like, hitting himself in the well, head. Bro, I'm putting my arm around and I'm going, thank you. Well, for, but, for showing a little heart and a little fight because there's not enough guys on this team right now that are doing that. Well, but he Brent did that for him getting the 15 yards on the punt. That next drive is the one where well, Trey the Morrison guy, like, that's the, guy, the yeah. next drive is the one where Trey Morrison okay. tried to murder Worthy. So yeah. it clearly didn't affect him. Or he got the go ahead from Brent to go ahead, you know, <laughs> just do one of those things. Fire, Reload. Fire us up. Let's I, I I said this last week. Venables needs a little wet work out yeah. there on the field. <laughs> I said this last week, bring it up again. Two things can be true here. Brent Venables and Jeff Lebby and this staff, 
If you're one of these people, these insane people that are calling for the guy to be fired, six games in, you're ridiculous. I think most sane people, you sh- you can't fire guys six games in. You got to give them yeah. some time. But if you're again, one of those people, give back the joystick. Is that what they say? <laughs> yes, yes. At the same time, <laughs> you ain't it. Like I said last it. week, while you're insane if you want to be fired, you can also it's also true, and you can also say fairly, this is awful. It sh- this shouldn't be happening. Something's got to change. The talent isn't very good on this team. Brent Venables didn't take over a ready-made championship team by any stretch. He's got guys, you know, not to disparage, but his quarterback's from UCF. Didn't play today. But his quarterback's from UCF. One of his key linemen is from Cal. One of his, you know what I mean? Like, he transfers from all over the place. He's kind of, you know, misfit toys team put together yeah. in some regards. Yeah. So nobody's saying that they need to go undefeated and win an Addy this year or anything like that. But they also shouldn't be... This is the first time OU's ever lost two straight games by 30-plus. Ever. Ever. There's definitely been less talented OU teams in this one. And OU still arguably had more talent than TCU. I think that's probably fair to say. I mean, it's still OU at the end of the day. Probably more so than Kansas State. Texas probably not. It shouldn't be this. So both those things can be true. This isn't going well at all. Brian Venables having a really rough first year. But it's just it's still, obviously, way too early to just say, like, this isn't working. He's not the guy. I mean, it's too early for all that. But at the same time, this is a disaster, and he needs to turn it around. Well, TCU has less talent than Oklahoma. First year head coach. Yeah, undefeated. same thing with the first year there. Texas Tech has way less talent than Oklahoma. First year head coach. Third string quarterback today put up more of a fight against a better Oklahoma State team than this Texas. Like Oklahoma State, mm-hmm. better than this Texas yeah, team. Turn that up. On the road exactly. in Stillwater, exactly. not at. The Cotton Bowl, better effort by the Red Raiders than Oklahoma today. This this Oklahoma team has been pathetic for three weeks. Flat out pathetic. Especially today and, and last week, yeah. obviously. Last week was a get hit in the mouth and roll over, and today was a – they showed some fight early. There was some juice on the sideline when the Wildcat was starting to work the fake field goal. But it's like at the first sign of like, oh, it's getting away from us, It there it goes, that's your ball game. It. I don't know. I, I don't know. If, if this team has any pride, you would hope that they, they come back next week and they find a way to deliver at, at home against Kansas. But I don't know. I have no confidence right now that that's going to happen. It feels like kind of like where Nebraska was or Michigan when Michigan got really average. You know, you got this big, proud program and this huge fan base, base that wants a championship every year, and a multi-million dollar coach, right, and all this hype. And the team goes into a funk and they can't get out of it. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Well, I, like what's what's you got to fire Scott Frost? You know, uh, that's what Nebraska was earlier this year. Like, all right, this we got to cut bait. Now, this like we said, six games in, that's not going to happen here at Oklahoma. No, he's he's yeah, he's getting next year yep. <laughs> at least. Well, I'd yeah. say I'd say minimum of three years. Yeah, unless I, we I, see I, more of what we saw out here today. Yeah, if it's this bad next year, maybe not. But yeah, yeah I would well, agree that probably at least three or four. Yeah, if it's this bad next year, you've got the SEC move looming, mm-hmm. and and you can't continue to spiral mm-hmm. down. But we said it in the post game wrap, uh, allseniors dot com, which by the way, all of our stories, post game press conferences, if you're gonna watch that, all that stuff, all up there. We're plugging but, away today. But uh, more st- more content already scheduled. Like at this moment, already have scheduled content for Sunday. It's all gonna be there. Uh, but in the post-game wrap, I said it, like, asking what this team is, we've seen them respond once already. And they got sad about themselves and laid an egg in Fort Worth and were embarrassed. Now they have an opportunity. It's OU Texas, and they were even worse today. Like, I expect them to look awful again next week because when someone shows you who they are, believe them, this team has shown you over and over these two responses. They're, they're two chances to respond from adversity. It's gotten worse and worse. First time ever in Big 12 play 0-3? No, first time since 98. That's yeah. yeah. Again, when it's you're... Not, you don't want to say first time since 98. When, when you're, you're looking up so John Blake stuff. When yeah. you are comparing what trajectory you're on to John Blake, when you're comparing your worst back-to-back losses, and I'm I'm showing who the John Blake era and saying, hey, this is where we need to look for you to Start add those things up, yeah. that's not good. That's not where you want to be. Well, let me ask a fun question on the way out here that I'm sure will depress some OU fans. What would Baseball you cons- and softball around the corner? <laughs> yeah, some fall fall stuff that I think fans should flock out to. What would constitute a successful season now? Today? What win total would you say if they get to that? If you, if you, if you were going to say, Oklahoma, you can have this many wins right now, that they Gotta should take 75. that and run. Got to be 7-5. 6-6 six six is an embarrassment. 
Uh, you're going to some charity bowl game that nobody wants to watch. Seven and five, at least you you got a winning record. Seven and five with a bowl game win, you can talk yourself into some momentum. Yeah. in the next year. Yeah, I eight and five. I mean, Stoops finished eight and five a couple times, and and they had a nice year the following year. So, yeah, if you do that, you can you can pawn this loss off on Dylan Gabriel, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, just not being there. Yep. Um, you can say yeah, that, it's not his fault. Right. Yeah. Not his fault. <laughs> Your but, fault, Dylan. But but you you can <laughs> say he club. he he got knocked out of the game against TCU and they weren't going to win that game and they weren't going to win this game with him. But at least like the mental damage, all that stuff, Dylan Gabriel sure. coming back. Honestly, if if we are driving to Shreveport, please God no. At the end of the year, <laughs> that is a success from where this team has been the last two weeks. Guaranteed because, right bowl. Because uh, look. The injuries are not getting better, guy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not getting better. This team does not have any depth. Uh, if Billy Bowman comes back and then Key Lawrence tweaks his hammy again, you're right back in the same spot of asking the question of do you put Woody Washington yeah. back at safety, all that stuff. So uh, just get to a bowl game right now is what you're looking at. It wasn't even that bad. To, I mean, you're missing two very key players. Obviously, Gabriel, the big one. We talked about that to death. And Billy Bowman. But, I mean, Marcus Major was on the fence, played. Wanya Morris on the fence, played. Marcus Stripling on the fence, played. Like, they actually had pretty much everybody today. Armis Thomas back. Armis Thomas played. Like, all those guys who were, like, on the fence, like, will they? are they out, are they in? Most of them were in, except for Billy Bowman and, obviously, Gabriel, which is the biggie. But I guess the, yeah. the only silver lining is that at least Brent in the post game said we were missing a lot of guys today, and that didn't matter. That was not the reason we lost. So, Guess that's your good. Brent's not going to make yeah. excuses, which is nice. The um, the whole we've got we're, we're tired, we're tired and we need to be fresh. Me. Felt like a little bit of an excuse. Yeah, but again, was it an excuse or a calling out, or like a self criticism, or, or a reason? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're looking for reasons. I've yeah. said this before. We're not making excuses. We're looking for reasons why this thing could possibly be going sideways like this. I don't even know where uh, we'll wrap it up because there's not much else needs to be said. Um, this is as bad as Oklahoma's been in a while. Um, so long while. Maybe it can turn around. It makes can. you respect. It makes you respect. Sorry, turn it off if you want to. I don't care. I'm going to say it. <laughs> oh God. Makes you respect what Lincoln Riley did, how he sustained it, and it absolutely one million percent makes you respect how damn good Bob Stoops' teams were, year in and year out. They never had a problem like this, like we saw out here today. Do you think you go from it, Bob's that, that, to, from from John Blake to Brent Venables? That's your that's your low points. Everything else was up here. Brent uh, Bob Stoops and and Lincoln Riley were up here. You got to respect the fact that those guys ran consistent programs. Lincoln, yes, stepped into a, a gold mine with that Stoops left him. I know, and and he left it worse than he found it, no doubt about it. But still, eleven wins is eleven wins. That brings up an interesting conversation, and I know we're trying to wrap up and get out of here, but. Do you think with this exact same roster, I know this reality doesn't exist because if Lincoln Riley's still here, Kit Williams will still be here and all that, but forget all that kind of part of it. With this exact same roster, every single guy is the same, and Lincoln Riley was the coach or Bob Stoops was the coach, are they still 3-3 three and three, or is it different? Is it just a product of Brett being new and still trying to learn on the job? Do you think that with Lincoln or Bob, mm, they question. would be better than 3-3? Three I, three? be- I think they would have beaten Kansas State, and I think they would have been way more competitive the last two weeks because they would have had an offensive plan. They didn't have a plan for when Dylan Gabriel got hurt. Dylan Gabriel goes down. What do we do next? We don't know. Let's try some other stuff. None, none of that, of course, worked. So, yeah, it makes you it makes you wonder. That's a great question, great hypothetical. Um, but I think, I mean, you were elite quarterback play away from beating Kansas State. That's yeah, the easiest one. Yeah, um, that's what he, he missed so many. And again, throws. this hypothetical doesn't totally work because if Lincoln was here, he wouldn't have. Not to this is going to sound by, very mean to Dylan Gabriel. He would guy. have an elite quarterback. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, yeah. That, 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 yeah. So I I think the the other one too that I <laughs> plus he's Dylan would be getting coached by a different guy, and I'm not knocking Jeff Levy. I'm just saying we know what yeah. the pedigree is for Lincoln Riley to coach quarterbacks. It's pretty damn impressive. It, here's the other one I asked you during the game. Another hypothetical. If you're Joe Siglione and you're watching this game, are you regretting the second that you saw where Alabama and Georgia were going with analysts recruiting all that stuff? Regardless of who the head coach is, do you regret? Hey, these are the two programs in college football that are setting the pace. Let's follow what they're doing as far as beefing up the support staff, beefing yeah. up all that. Because right, wrong, or otherwise, 
it looks like it hurt tensions with the guy that's now in Los Angeles yeah. taking a bad roster, and it, it's smoke and mirrors, and the defense isn't good, but they're winning football games. That's what Oklahoma's not doing right now. Joe has said he's gone on record as saying Lincoln had everything that he wanted. D- I think we can dispute that. It, reg- Lincoln shouldn't have had to ask for it. Yeah, it, no, should, exactly. it should have been there three years ago. Exactly. It should have been in place. With, like, Alabama was doing this when Lincoln Riley took the job. It should have been in place. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Lincoln shouldn't have had to ask for it. And that was the number one thing. Brent sat at his lake house back in Clemson saying, yeah, sure, we, I'll come to Oklahoma if you do this, 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 and this. And Castiglione and Harris finally said, yeah, okay. They're sitting on that airplane trying to negotiate over the phone. <laughs> yeah. And they, they capitulated and said, yeah, okay, whatever you want. He got what he wanted. Now he needs time to be able to implement everything and install the the culture that he wants. More questions than answers right now. Um, this the second half of the season. We did hit the midway point today. Um, <laughs> the second half of the season is going to be really interesting because, I mean, we might have six more games left in the college football season for us. Think that's insane. That. Yeah, that's that. insane. Yeah. I mean, for a very long time, it was a given that they would be at least in the Big 12 championship game. Hope you guys like on the bowl. Hope you guys like some Otega away and and no Rajon Rondos on the court. I'm excited for OU basketball. I'm looking at that counter like, gimme, 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 gimme. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. It can go a lot of different ways. I can still. I mean, this can spiral and they can win no more games or maybe only one more. Or then Gabriel comes back. I still think they're. They're not that bad with Dylan Gabriel. They're not 49 nothing bad. That's what Brent said last week. I think they're okay. They I think they're an okay team with Dylan Gabriel. So we'll see what happens if he's back. I, I assume he'll be back next week. I mean, we don't know that for a fact, but I assume he'll be back. We'll find out later in the week, I, I, I think. And I would think that they got a pretty good shot to win next Saturday. There's still some very winnable games on the schedule. So we'll see what happens the rest of the way. But it's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, so you're going to want to keep up with us. AllSooners.com, place to be. Like Ryan said, we have loads there for you from this game, full reaction from Brent Venables, some players, of course, game stories, game highlights, if for some reason you're into that, game, uh, post-game rapper we shot down on the field the live here blog at the Cotton was, Bowl. The live blog was fire today. Live blog was fire, apparently. <laughs> I can't get into it. There was no – I always have a hard time having signal anyway. It's the worst here. I yeah. couldn't get anything going on down there. Yeah. I don't know if OU fans uh, were – Rage and like yeah, or like very annoyed because I was like, sorry, there's not anything nice to say, and I felt there's not my my live blog post kept getting more and more <laughs> just like you got the snark going, today. just uh, just more and more just like what are they doing? This is embarrassing, and they should feel embarrassed. And uh, I was like, you know, I had to take myself out of the live blog in the third quarter to be like, I don't know if I'm being unfair right now, but right. it just was piling on. That's the thing. It's live live blog reactions, uh, hot takes, whatever you want to call it. That's how we're feeling at the moment. So yeah, that's why it's so popular. I'm looking forward to next Saturday, kind of. I mean, remotely. <laughs> Are you just, really, just, though? Just Are you really? Like, not real. No, I'm not. <laughs> and, interested to <laughs> see. But from a curiosity perspective, I am because there is no lower than that. There's not. Oh, that's right. Interested so, to see how they respond. Not maybe. looking <laughs> Not looking forward to being on a stage from 7 to 9 a.m. and having to be like, well, I don't know how Oklahoma rebounds from that. That'll be the not fun part. Yep. <laughs> we'll be back at the stadium next week. What's that crowd going to be like? Ooh, blue. I'm a, a lot of blue. Think about that. 11 a.m. kick. Mini, mini khakis. Student section gonna be empty. That's my prediction. Yeah, it's gonna for be full summer. of blue, uh, blue Jayhawk fans. I don't think Kansas has football fans. It's not what? that far of a drive down from to Norman. Well, it, <laughs> just what what the Lloyd they Noble now, Center typically looks like, which is half Kansas fans. That's yes. true. Man, Lloyd Kansas does invade the Lloyd Noble Center. That, that that's would be fact. a low, an all-time low, and an embarrassment for this program if there are more KU fans at the end of that game than Oklahoma fans. They should honor Puka Williams in that game. <laughs> I did say I kept saying like they keep hitting rock bottom and they find a way to go lower rock bottom, which rock bottom is supposed to mean the lowest, obviously. <laughs> if they lose to Kansas at home, especially if it's big. That would be rock bottom. I don't Couldn't know how you get lower than that. Than that. Nope. I don't know how you get lower than that. So we'll find out what happens next Saturday. Look forward to it. Of course, allsters.com. Like I said, full reaction from this game from coaches, players, us, game stories, game highlights. All that good stuff is there. And we'll have stuff all week. The fall of this game is going to be felt for a couple more days, I think, uh, into Brent's next press conference on Tuesday. And we'll turn the page to the Kansas game, which will be back in Norman at the uh, the old press box there, our, our usual spot. We might go back in the TV, TV room. That seemed to work pretty good. Yeah. We'll do that again uh, in one week from now. And then the bye week. I think we all need that for our psyche watching this football team I think team we right need now. a refresher. 
We need a refresher. They need a refresher. We need a refresher. The fans probably need one. Everybody, just a reset, just, and uh, that's coming up. We need. We can watch some other college football and be like, oh, that's what good programs look like currently. Now that's just, not teams. Now you're just being mean. <laughs> that, that's not what this team has been for three weeks. Yeah. We've got. Let's be honest. We've gotten spoiled. The fans have gotten spoiled, and as media, going to great bowl mm-hmm. games every year and watching your watching the team that you cover win constantly, we've gotten spoiled. Yep. And so this is a new experience for us. We don't know how to react. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, if Dylan Gabriel is back next week, they better win that game. Yep. I mean, yes. you got to. Yep. You got to. You got to. I don't care if it's Davis Bevel and the Wildcat. You got to win that game. No, you, you cannot can't. lose at home. They, they won't. <laughs> they won't. They couldn't. I don't know if I don't know if they could beat a G five. UTEP and Kent State would be problematic without Gabriel. This offense is so broken without him. It it it's tough. So we'll see. Looking forward to that one though. We'll find out what happens the next piece of this really weird season. The first three weeks, last three weeks, we couldn't find bigger difference, I think, maybe in the history of this sport in a three-game stretch back-to-back. We'll find out what happens in Game 7 next Saturday. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back next Wednesday. Any finishing touch we have on this one, I don't know what we'll have, but maybe a little something. We'll preview the Kansas game and look ahead. You can catch that show, all the podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, Google, iHeart, wherever you get your podcast. If you have an Amazon able device, just say Alexa, play the All Series podcast. Let's post on our website, allseries.com. Click on the player list on your phone, your tablet, or your computer. And of course, watch all the podcasts on Hoover's YouTube page, John Hoover Media. That's it for now. We'll see you next Wednesday previewing the Kansas game. For Ryan Chapman and John Hoover, I'm Josh Calloway. We'll catch you guys next time.